It's 6.04 p.m. Today is Tuesday, December 19th, 2023. This is the Bluff Town Council regular meeting. Roll call. Linda Sosa. Jim Sayers. Brant Murray. Brant Linda. Can you hear me? Brant, can you unmute? Okay, Brant, Brant is here and Linda's here. I can see both of them. I'm going to rejoin because if you Anne can't Lepin, hear me, no, I'll no. be back. Okay. Thank you, Brant. The first thing is the approval. Okay, now we're getting an echo. <laughs> Let's try it again. Approval of the Bluff Town Council regular meeting minutes of December 12th, 2023. Has everybody received them, read them, and are there any changes or modifications? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Can you hear me? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So we're only hearing the audience if I turn my speaker on. Oh. It's Turn weird. Your speaker on or your microphone? Well, turn your speaker down. Okay. 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 Can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hearing anybody unless I put my speaker on. Oh. Then we can hear Brant and Linda. Oh, let's see. Do you have my audio? Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Um, Is yours on? Turn off your microphone and I'll bring this up and I'll use my microphone and we'll see if that works. Okay. So sign off and go back and ask myself. No, just turn, just uh, okay, off. get turn off your mic. Yeah, it's off. That's why I'm getting that feedback. And is your microphone on? Mine is on. Okay. Is yours on, Jim? I don't know yet. I'm not even in yet. It says, uh, yes. My microphone is off. So here, my microphone is off. I think if we, if you, Linda or Brad, if you want to talk or if there's somebody with a public comment, we'll need to change that. We'll need to probably shut yours off or turn mine on. Maybe. Okay. Turn off your microphone. So you turn yours on. No squilch on that one. Okay, I'm, I'm turning my microphone back on. We need to figure this out. I don't know how Just to do turn it off. Turn your mic off and I'll turn my mic. Okay. Okay. 
going to happen. Okay, let's. Nope, it's still going to echo. So, Linda and Brant, can you hear me now? All right. So, how do you vote on the minutes of December 12th, 2023? I was not at that meeting. I'm going to abstain from the vote, Mayor. Brent, can you turn your speaker up a little so I can hear them? My speaker? No, Linda, how do you vote on the minutes? Um, approve. Okay. Anyone opposed? Then it's four ayes, one abstain. Then the second is the approval of the Bluff Town Council and Utah Dene Bakea meeting to walk through the Cooperative <clears throat> Cultural Center for, for discussion and demolition. Did everybody read the minutes? Are there any modifications, changes? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. It's unanimous. Public comment. There will be a three minute time limit for each person wishing to make a public comment. If you exceed the three minute time limit without permission, the meeting controller will mute you. So Lou, are you able to tell if anybody has raised a hand um, or put their name in the chat box? Okay, so Catherine Smith has raised a hand. I didn't know I had to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, okay, go ahead, Catherine. Yeah, um, I, I just have some concerns about the multipath proposal. I realize this is not set in stone. I support wholly having that multipath um, going down 191. I think it's splendid and badly needed. I'm just extremely concerned about it going along the whole edge of our property, especially when it gets so close to Allen's shop. I'm worried about pilfering and vandalism and uh, theft. Um, I've, I've experienced uh, paths going by pro my property before, and it really did open up a lot, a can of worms. Um, so I, I, I don't see how that's really necessary, and I don't really like the idea of having a pu public multipath um, going through a residential area. Uh, it's going to kind of uh, invade our privacy. It'll make the animals go nuts. And I just would, I just really don't like that idea. It makes me very, very uncomfortable. So I would like to make sure that I put that out there before anything is decided. Um, but like I said, I think um, the whole idea is splendid and having a bike path going to Butler Wash and all of that, I think it's just a wonderful idea of connected communities and so forth. But I think for the town of Bluff and particularly where we are, um, having a throughway like that, especially if it's e-bikes, <laughs> they're like little motorcycles. They fly by there, and um, I've been around a bike path before, and it it it's crazy. I just, I'm afraid. I'm I'm seeing a, a real influx of tourists coming down in the summer, going to the nature conservancy paths. You probably don't see it as much as we do, but we live there which is fine and I prefer having that than a housing development. So I'm, I'm good with it, but I, I suspect that will also happen with that multi-use path. And it's disturbing because this could be at night too. And the other part of it is, and I just said this to the sheriff the other day, there are vagrants that are camping out in the summer between the wash just across from our house and the town of Bluff. I've seen them camped out there. He's kind of looking for some of these guys. And I'm kind of, it looks a little like there could be some drug paraphernalia along with that. And I think that 
open pathway may encourage some of that behavior. And that that is concerning. So, yeah, I just want to put that out there. Um, and that uh, I'm in particular with his shop, he's got a lifetime of things that he's accumulated in there. Yes, he can lock it up. Yeah. But as we know, that doesn't necessarily keep people out. And it's awfully it's close to our house. So that's really all. And okay. I, I say this with great respect. I mean, I, I realize this is a great effort and all that, and that it's goodwill, but those are my concerns. Um, yes. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Then if there's nothing else on the radar for public comment, we'll move to the unfinished business. Number one, update on Bear Zero's partnership work with the town of Bluff. I met a week or so ago with uh, the executive director of Bearsier's partnership because Sarah Barack had raised a question with Aaron Nelson, who raised it with me. I should note our town manager is uh, excused from the meeting. She's on vacation. Um, and the long and short of it is, is that Bearsier's partnership would like to explore a uh, a memorandum of understanding with the town for the work on dark sky initiative so that we'd have a more formalized partnership. After Aaron and I talked, I talked to Sarah Barack a little bit and then set up an appointment with uh, the executive director of BEP to explore that a little bit. And it sounds like it's a, a really necessary piece of our relationship with Bears Ears partnership on this Dark Sky Initiative because they are really leading this piece of it by doing the education and the dark sky measurements. And while it's not so much financial support as they're seeking, it's like drawing some boundaries and some obligations so that we all know what we're doing to move this forward. And since, um, since it made sense to me, I thought I'd just raise it with all of you. And if you're okay with it, I'll just continue to explore that with whoever it is at the Bears Ears Partnership that's going to head that and then talk to our attorney about getting a, a draft memorandum of understanding sometime in the first part of the year. Brant. Mayor, I like this idea a lot and uh, I think we should explore it. It's a, it's a good way to, to kind of get our arms around the remaining situation. So I think it's great. So does anyone have an objection? If I continue to explore this, we won't be signing anything until we've got some detail worked out. Yeah, I think that's probably a good thing. Okay, then hearing no objection, I'll just continue to work with the executive director and Sarah Barack and our attorney and see what we can come up with as a draft memorandum of understanding to go through. <clears throat> Then the second is update on AmeriCorps Red 4 and Triple C team and the work that needs to be done, voting on changes to housing costs and cleaning supplies and food needs for their first night in Bluff. The update is that there will be eight, possibly nine AmeriCorps team coming. They come January 1st and depart February 21st. They're coming out of Sacramento, so it'll be a two-day trip like it was before. They'll get here mid to late afternoon on the 8th. And since their van will be loaded with all of their equipment, hard hats, clothing, all the things that they need, they won't have any room for bringing substantial groceries. So I'll just toss out again to everybody if you have things left over from the holidays that are snacks or, or food that would be edible for a team we can go ahead and take them to the mission um, a day or so before, and then they'll have some <clears throat> some things to eat the first night. The second, the, the first full day that they're here, we'll do an orientation, similar to what we did the last two years. The first part of it in the morning will be at the mission, sitting outside, hopefully the weather will be good, giving them an, uh, an outline of who we are, what we do. So all of the council, any of the public who'd like to be there, please come and meet the AmeriCorps team. They'll introduce them, them themselves, themselves. They'll introduce each other. And then we'll um, 
head out for lunch, probably like we did last year, pick up Subway sandwiches um, in Blanding, go to Edge of the Cedars, show them where that is, and then do a little tour around Blanding, and then they'll stay up there and get groceries. So the contract for them came in today, and I can hold off until the second, I can hold off until the second to have you all review it. It's a standard contract, but I have to have it back to them no later than the fourth. So I'll ask Aaron to send it. Well, Aaron's not Aaron, Aaron's not here, so Aaron won't send it out. I will try to get it scanned somehow and out to you, but it's very basic. I I think the main thing. Excuse me, I've got to shut my phone off. But the main thing is that, based on conversations with Utah Dene Bakea, they are not prepared to commit to any cost related to AmeriCorps, even though the majority of the work will be done in the CCC, in the uh, Cooperative Cultural Center. And so I did some computations. Well, first of all, the mission has availability. They can be at the mission in the building that's the U shape. They'd have their own rooms. They'll have use of the building, which includes the, you know, the kitchen, the living area, the bathroom. There'll probably be a second bathroom up and running in the adjacent building um, right now. Maintenance is working on getting that up and running. The number of days that we would have the team there would be 44 days. And so what the mission and I had initially discussed was 3,000 for the month of January. So when I went back to them, it's 3,000 for the month of February. If I do the computations of eight team members for 44 days, that comes out to $17 a day to house, per person to house them, which I think is totally reasonable. But this would, uh, I'm, Raising this because we could potentially end up with the entire 6,000. We have it in the budget. We're doing an amended budget. We can just move it over. But until we get a, a stronger word from Utah to Nebakea, how they're situated and what they're willing and able to fund, that's in addition to the, the CCC, I think we should be voting to either cover the full cost or not cover the full cost if they're not willing to are able to contribute. If we can't cover the full cost, because I know that they're in discussion about whether they can um, contribute, then I think we would just have to turn the team down because there's really no other option for the month of, uh, for two months. So discussion, Brant? Mayor, I think, I think the benefit of having those guys here for $17 a day um, is, is worth us full funding this operation um and i do think that accounting wise you know we've worked with udb on different payments and a different accounting and i do feel like they'll eventually uh or not eventually i think they'll see the advantage of this and come our way so i'm willing them to, to say let's go ahead and full fund this operation in case they don't but if we kind of um ask them as partners to help us other comments, thoughts? Yeah, I have a comment. Okay. Um, you know, these folks are uh, going to be doing a lot of work for the town. And frankly, I think if we can get the Arundo close to eradication for six grand, which is what we can kind of do here pretty we can really put a dent in that stuff along with the other activities that we've got lined out for them with that time um, i think this is what i like to pay my taxes for because it's it's kind of a deal it's a good deal and um, so i would be in favor of the six grand uh, like brant says 17 a day per is um, you know that's not much thank you so I am in favor of it too. If we've got the work, the the Arundo, 
um, we've already committed to the Canyon Country Discovery Center, and so I don't think we have enough. I don't think it'll take more than a week to get out what we've got. So I don't want to count on that as being okay. something that they're working on. But if we've got enough work in the, in the old school and, and those other projects that are on it, then I, I'd say go for it. If, if we don't and we have this problem, then maybe we need to wait. But if we've got the work other than that. You know. How many people are on this crew? Ten? No, eight or nine. Eight, eight or nine. Okay, well. I think um, we've got the work with the ceiling in the CCC and the I other projects. Like yeah. They're uh, with the precedent coming out. There's, yeah, there's some work on the on the BCC grounds over the, by the fence, yeah. by the ballpark that could be done. Some, there's some, so there's some, we can find some stuff for them to do, I believe. Oh, yeah. I had to do this, the scope, and then I did an amended scope and another amended scope. So we've got the work. Um, I'm not concerned about that. Okay, well then I'm in favor of, uh, I still think six grand is um, something that we can afford. Mayor, I'll make a motion. Okay, what's the motion? For us to full fund this um, AmeriCorps group um, at 6,000 or ballpark, um, you know, and move forward with the project. Second. Any other discussion? Uh, um, did UDP say that they might be able to make some adjustments later on? Uh, yes. Financially? Well, yes. That's, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and I think we certainly go back to that when we get further along. Then all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's unanimous. And then one other part that we have to to do is put together cleaning supplies, but we bought a fair amount of supplies for the Eclipse. And so at this point, I don't think we need to, to vote to approve cleaning supplies. I'm pretty sure we've got everything we need here. And if we need something um, down the road after they get here, we can do that. But I just wanted to alert you, we do, that's one thing we do provide, the mission doesn't provide that. All right, then moving on to the, the meeting with Utah Dene Bakea at the Cooperative Cultural Center on December 15th, 2023, and then the meeting today for the Design Review Committee. So who wants to tackle the first part with the meeting on the 15th? Um, that was the walkthrough, right? It was. Yeah, we met with uh, Janet the director and Melanie were both there at first and then they bowed out and Damien was left to represent their views and Aaron and you and I were there, um, I'm sure someone else, but uh, we simply went through, you know, it was a good meeting. We got to know Janet a little bit better and it, everyone seemed to in agreement in the first two rooms and we sort of um, rinse and repeat for the remaining rooms. It's going to take the baseboards out, uh, the crummy old uh, rubber, rubberized baseboards out. Uh, we're going to take out the carpeting and we're going to uh, do some more work on the roof. Specifically, there are a whole bunch of support two by fours along the hallways, quite a few of them, and they can all come down. They're not holding up any duct work or anything. So. Um, it's each one of those is going to be a two man job, each one, and there are dozens of them. <laughs> there are quite a few. So we're going to try to preserve all those two by fours. They're all really straight, really good, well seasoned eight, eight foot two by fours, which I'm sure people will be able to use um, without too much trouble. So um, beyond that, uh, what, did, well, what else do I, did I miss? Mayor, you were there. Lou or Linda? The uh, take down all of the whiteboards and yes. cork boards and those kind of things and store them and then use them as needed or not. Lou, anything you want to add? Uh, just, uh, we all did uh, walk through the whole thing together and, and we saw what uh, Sam Weldon had already pulled out on the insulation and the ceiling tile. And then the rest of the ceiling will 
come down with these guys, and that'll open up the space. And uh, it's it's looking looking good, but we're trying to just get rid of the things that will be in the way without making any huge changes before we have a plan. And it's um, right into the little the modular unit. And, uh, also, Jim Dogwell, the new upcoming, and uh, Brett Hornby were there as well. So, in my conversations with uh, Janet Sloman, she, over the uh, last two weeks, there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect with the board of Utah, Geneva K, and the executive director team. So, what I'd like to do is reduce what we've all agreed to to something that we all sign off on that says this is the work that's going to be done this is the work that is not going to be done because the last thing i want to do is have us move into another period where there's an executive director and there's a, a statement that they have not been informed or we have not informed them and it's not a, a thing of, of not trusting them it's just that right now everyone's kind of in a state of flux so i'd really like to to just reduce this to something before the work starts. And that'll probably be the first, uh, probably have that on the agenda on the second to look at. So if, those of you who were there, think about what it is we talked about as to agreed, not agreed, so that we don't get things torn out and suddenly go, oh, uh, hmm, this wasn't an agreement. And I'll get that roughed out with Aaron um, over the next couple of weeks. And then, Jim, do you want to talk about the design review committee? Uh, sure. And by the way, those uh, workers over there that will be doing that will be jointly supervised by myself and Melanie Daniels. So there will be a UBD representative over there at least some of the time. So that, that's the agreement, okay. I believe. So uh, the Utah Diné Bikay, uh, uh, excuse me, the DRC Design Review Committee, the contra contractual little committee there that met today and uh, no nothing new um, that I can recall we went over what had been discussed last at the last meeting uh, when the director was there and we clarified a couple of things and um, I don't know what else that is uh, important enough to talk about I uh, uh, just some uh, talking a little bit about the meeting Damien was there and he was talking about the uh, you know how well it went and you know it was mostly happy talk we we only went about 20 minutes 30 minutes something like that today yeah 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 i think we're kind of at a, a pause period over the holidays so yeah yeah sounds good <clears throat> then i hope jim hook is on because there's an update on the Bluff Airport, which is number four, summary of the meeting on December 11th, 2023, and an update on the airport. And I think Jim, look, if he's on, I'd like to have him do the presentation. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Oh, good. Thank you, Jim. If you wouldn't mind covering. Sure. As uh, the mayor said, we had a at, at the request of the Utah Division of Aeronautics, uh, Kirk McDaniel, we had a meeting with our airport engineer, uh, Kirk Nielsen of Javiation, uh, the town manager and the mayor and I, to work on the capital improvement program for the next five and now the next 10 years for the, the airport. Um, we just have finished up the, the surface um, maintenance this last year and I think there's there's some papers for the mayor to sign to to get the extra money that was the overage for materials for that that project but that project is basically over <coughs> it, the airport although in good shape right now has some tremendous cracks opening up in the asphalt and so as a five-year plan the state aviation would like to see that asphalt project ripped out the as the old asphalt chew it back up put it back out again kind of like they did on the highway from here to arizona and um it'd be a big big deal 
there's some other improvements that I'd like to see. I'd like to see it extended some length and, and maybe even widened and then have a turnaround at the uh, northeast end. It's right now you, the planes have to turn around on the, the strip, the airport strip itself. And it's pretty tight. A lot of times the, the everybody's sitting, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Good. Brand or yeah, Brand's down too. It's about a $2 million project. And um, of course the town is going to have to boot in their little bit, but that's the reason that we're going to a, a five and a 10 year plan. Um, we can budget that. And I, I'm not, I'm not the money man at all on this. I'm just the manager. So that's up to uh, this board and the future boards to, to decide to fund their airport. I've signed up uh, at the, again, at, the suggestion of a state aeronautics to a, a website called black cat. And that's where all the grant funding and everything that happens for that runs through for airports in the state. And so I'll keep track of that. And this, this plan, this $2 million plan happens if there's money available. And I mean, we've been pretty good for all, a lot of our grants for the last two or three years since COVID but it's hard to know what will happen in the future, but that's ahead of us. That's my um, report. Thank you, Jim. Any questions from the council of Jim Hook? Thank you. Yeah, Brant. Yeah, just, just wanted to say thank you. I think this is a great time to do this and uh, this five and 10 year plan. We all know how capital projects unfold. So this is very timely and, Thank you for all your hard work on this, Mr. Hook, and, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks, Brant. And I, I think it's a great idea to have a plan and then look for grant money, then to get grant money and then try to figure out what to do with it. And then the state knows that these big projects, so I'm happy to have them uh, join us with that. And that airport is a, an asset to our town, whether everybody realizes that or not. It is. Okay. Thank you so much. Signing out. Thank you. So just from a practical view, I was going to have everybody look at this, but I don't know if it went out in the packet today. It's a fairly long estimate. Yeah, it did. And so because if we voted tonight, we have two people outgoing who would be making decisions over the next four to five to six to seven years for essentially the two people incoming. And so I, unless there's a objection, I'd prefer to hold off on a detailed discussion and vote on this until we have the two incoming uh, seated because this will impact the budgets that they'll be voting on. Do you need a motion to move this, Mayor? No, I don't think so because I don't even know that I put it on for a vote as much as just summarizing but I would like to know if there's an objection so we can talk about it. Jim uh, I, I don't have an objection to what you're saying. If you're saying to delay, uh, I think we would want to see um, this itemized and specified a little bit, a lot more. Well, I've got the packet in front of me here. And the plan itself of how that's going to unfold. Unless there's some deadline that we need it to sign. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll check with um, the powers that be on this. I don't think there's a deadline. They would just like to see the capital improvement plan passed, including this. And so I think if we did it in the first part of January, we'd be okay. If I'm wrong about that, then I try to convene a five-minute special meeting to talk about it before the end of the year but well I, that's my guess it's particularly over holiday next two weeks so yeah I, I think that these I mean I'm this is my last meeting I mean I don't have I don't really have any business voting on anything you know? well, well you do have to show up at the meeting on the first though to hand off because we have to be have a quorum to open the meeting and then the new ones come in, we swear them in, and then you two are off. But you two need to show up at the beginning of the, the meeting on the second. I can just see it now. We don't have a quorum because Linda, Lou, or I are unavailable. So. 
Let's get these guys sworn in. No. Well, and you have to get your watch too. Yeah, oh, that's right. The watch, the Rolex that we're getting. Oh. <laughs> the future is hard to predict. <laughs> All right. Then, then moving to the report. Uh, number five, report on planning and zoning meetings and planning and zoning's presentation of the work on the sign ordinance revisions to the business owners of Bluff on December 12th, 2023. Luann, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, planning and zoning has been meeting um, regularly and they have a meeting tomorrow night. I don't know if tomorrow night is happening. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But, it, um, but that would be the last one of this year if it's on. Um, they have had no land use clearances, so nobody's come in to ask permission for any building. Any, you know, they've got to come to get a land use clearance before they go get a building permit from the county, and, and so none of that's happened. So nobody's uh, doing anything in town right now. They are working on the, the sign ordinance. They want to make it a standalone ordinance for uh, instead of in the zoning, because right now it's kind of part of the zoning ordinance. So they'd like to pull it out separate. So they've been working on it quite a bit. And then uh, the chair, I mean, Podmore went to the business owners of Bluff and presented to them. And uh, and then they, they asked their questions and were giving feedback and whatnot. So, um, the other one that they're working on is dirt moving. They, gone to Moab and, and kind of checking to see like when you move a certain amount of dirt, at what point would the town want to know that? And it's mostly looks like it's around geological hazards. Um, if you're moving a wash, if you're moving a, a floodplain area, if you're pushing dirt down the hill on somebody below you, if you're causing erosion, that sort of stuff. So that's what they're just looking into at the moment. And then the other one is uh, on the subdivision changes they'll be uh, working on that is that that's required until it's due by the end of the year of 2024. So they'll be working on that with, uh, with uh, somebody from the state and signed from the state. Um, but the other one that they've been working on quite hard is the RV ordinance. And what they're doing there is trying to put that in with the zoning as to whether you can live in them whether you can park them on the street and inhabit them, if you can park them in a driveway, if you can put several of them on somebody's property, you know, all those questions, like can I put three, can I put one, can I put, you know, uh, can you live in them, how long can you live in them, can they be in mobile home parks, all those questions that have been uh, tossing around to get a draft out. So if you're interested in any of those, they discuss that, or the recordings are on the national <laughs> the national public website, the Utah public website. Um, so you can catch up on that if you want to hear what they've been doing at the work sessions. But then I, and did you go into the business owners? Is there any more to say there? I think that that's all I have really. Yeah, I think the only thing I have to add to the business owners of Bluff is um, the way Amanda Podmore structured it was so that she could present and take some questions, but there, there was not public comment or input on the specifics. And that's because they're still working on the ordinance and there'll be a public hearing that the public will be invited to, to be able to address any concerns or questions before it comes to us. So <clears throat> it was a good presentation and a lot of good questions that came out of it. So if there's nothing else on that, the new businesses report on the Utah League of Cities and Towns elected officials essentials training on December 16th, 2023. And this was virtual on the 9th of December. They had a live presentation. So this was the um, virtual presentation. It went from nine to one o'clock on, on a Saturday, which is unfortunate, but it's also when they they do this type of training. Britt Hornsby and Jennifer Davila attended. I attended. Linda attended. And I don't know, I don't think Lou made it to this one. But it was, it covered uh, OPMA, which is Open and Public Meetings Act. It covered ethics and uh, disclosures, conflicts of interest, 
some land use. The land use was at the end and they didn't do much with land use, which reminds me, I should say one more thing about planning and zoning. They have decided to use Michael Hansen um, as the subdivision uh, group to write the ordin uh, this new subdivision ordinance. And so in order to have him come and present uh, we needed to have a memorandum of understanding for him to come to a meeting and present to us in planning and zoning. It'll be in February on planning and zoning's agenda. I just went ahead and signed the MOU because this is free. We agreed to do use a free consultant. That's who they chose and to keep this moving um, and get in, the, get in line quickly because they'll start doing the work in February or March. I just signed the MOU and I'll have that sent out to everyone. It just basically says we commit to using Hanson at no fee along the state guidelines with state supervision. Do you need a vote to support that? I do. That's what I forgot. So made. So moved. Second. Any questions or thoughts? Then all in favor say aye. 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 All right. It's unanimous. What I thought, I sent out a, a, an email to everyone on the council about really the salient points that the league made. <clears throat> Todd Godfrey, who is the league's attorney, presented on the questions, or presented on the section on ethics, uh, the disclosure of conflict of interest, um, how you get into trouble. And it was interesting because he started the conversation with Congratulations, elected, newly elected officials. You now are able to commit five new felonies that you can't commit when you're not an elected official. <laughs> and uh, and then he proceeded to talk about some of those. And I I think that for me, the, the piece that I really appreciated him stressing with getting new council members is that Utah sets a very low bar for conflict of interest. And so in January, we'll all be signing off on forms. And what we need to, to do is disclose the conflict of interest. And that's all that Utah requires. He's a practicing attorney. He represents uh, other municipalities. And his advice was pretty um, strict. That is not enough. If you have a conflict of interest and it directly financially impacts you, you should disclose it, step away from discussion, step away from the dais. I'm not sure the folding tables constitute the dais. Step away from the dais and don't vote. And he said he really spent a lot of time on that. And I think that that's really important. Um, we all know Utah sets a very low bar on conflicts of interest. And so when I was asked by um, someone what the most important parts to pay attention to, I said, really, I think the Open and Public Meetings Act, mm -hmm. what you can, can do in closed sessions, that's really important. What you can't do, what the town's business should be done in open as much as possible. And then the ethics piece of it. I think the budget will come to, to Britt and Jen as we go along. A lot of the other things will as we work through the projects, they'll have a lot of questions, but in thinking about that training, that was really pretty important. Uh, Linda, did you have anything you wanted to add or elaborate on? I thought it was really helpful. I mean, this is the third one that we've been to and um, there were, you know, the lot, certain laws changed. There were, so there are a few little changes, but he just, um, they really emphasize the basics that we need to know and follow. And so it was real, I think it was great that Jen and Britt were there. So it's, it, it's a lot to get up to speed to, but it was really helpful. One other thing I'll add, I was mistaken. I had said that I didn't think paying, paying the $45 really did much other than get you a new book. And that I was told that there was no revision to the book, but that's not accurate. There is a 2024 book. It has some changes in it because of some of the changes in the law. So I have a copy. Linda has a copy. Britt and Jen's, if they 
haven't arrived yet will have a copy. And then Lou, we should get you a copy because there are some changes in there that are different from the 2022 or 21 book. Any questions or anything else? Thank you. Okay, so number seven, discuss a discussion and vote on year-end bonuses for employees. And that's kind of a misnomer on my part. Um, it's really a vote on end of the year bonuses for not just employees, but also like planning and zoning and whatever. So we did this last year and I think we did, Linda, do you remember if it was 30 or $50 per person? It was 50 and I believe we've done it for two years. I think we should do it a third year and I'll make a motion. <laughs> Second, whatever the motion is. So is the motion Brandt to pay $50 to each person as a bonus for 2023? Thank you. Wish them Merry Christmas and, and uh, appreciate the hard work. We've got, a, we've got a heck of a crew working hard for this town, and it's, it's mighty gratifying. Any other comments or questions? We so we have paid our employees and our planning and zoning people. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's unanimous. So report on the LHCC meeting on December eighteenth, twenty twenty three. We hadn't met in so long, I could not remember what LHCC stood for. <laughs> I had to ask Mac. Um, it's the Local Homeless uh, Coalition Committee. And we met, um, we'd been meeting quarterly, and it's a requirement under the, the state guidelines for receiving funds from the federal to the state, to the county, to us for um, work on the unsheltered and uh, problems that come up with being unsheltered. So it includes mental health things, um, drugs and alcohol, primarily focused on helping them navigate being unsheltered. The main takeaway on this is that we hadn't met for quite a while and people had forgotten what grants we have or what the process was. So Max spent a fair amount of time very patiently going over things that we've gone over the last four years. Uh, there are requirements that we do the point in time count. And this year, Mac said it's, this is Mac McDonald, the county administrator, it's either January 26th or the 29th. He doesn't know which, and he's clarifying that. So. I've done it every year since we were required to do it or since it became um, a function of the county to be sure we're all doing it. So it's my recollection is we can do it over a period of three days. The first year we were told we had to do it in 24 hours, which was not accurate. And then there are guidelines for determining what is unsheltered. Uh, because we use a diff all of the, the guidelines for giving funds for unsheltered or homeless people has a different definition. So what the school district has to use for providing services is different from what we use in the point, point in time count, which is different from some of the HUD requirements. And so once again, I'll have to refresh my memory. You can do it on an app and they prefer on an app, but given some of the remoteness, uh, Father Hubbard and I did not use the app. We used paper to do it, but it would be really great since we're going to do it over three days if people would volunteer to help out with that a little bit because it was a lot of work and January looks like January and February is going to be a lot of work for the town council on the issues around the disconnect action 
and with getting UDV up to speed with the EPA grant and getting that in place. So while I would love to say it, nothing is better than riding around with somebody else and just chatting while we check out areas, it would be super helpful to get some help. We have to cover the bluff area. This year, the um, Max McDonald will be asking the BLM and the Sheriff's Department and Forest Service to help keep an eye out for encampments. But I think it's really important. And I quite frankly don't want to dedicate three days to doing it. Who is requiring the count? The federal government. Is there any money attached to the count? Any funding is it, as a is result? Is there any funding at yeah, all for yes. these people uh, yeah. to the unhoused to get any help? Yeah, through the grants that San Juan County receives. So, and have these people been getting this help through these grants? I would say that in the first two years, not any substantial help. This past year, there actually um, has been some help uh, put out because they need to spend the grant money. It is, I'm trying to think of a way to say it. There is a, a widespread belief, and in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it is not accurate that there are no unsheltered or homeless people in this county. And I don't believe that. Um, and so because the requirements are, are very strict for how you spend the grant money, the, there is grant money within the county, but it has been very difficult to be able to spend it until this past year due to um, probably perceptions in some in part, but also not being sure what the application is. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah. I I just have heard about this count for a few years, and each year it comes up around twenty or something like that in the area or over. Yes. And yet, in those years, I haven't heard word one uh, from the county or the federal government about helping any of those people. And I'm wondering if that's true throughout the county or, you know, I'd just like to see some information um, from maybe Mac about, you know, do they have a report on what they've done uh, or, you know, where the, if they're getting money, what, where it's being spent. I don't see, um, you know, just counting people seems, um, <laughs> you know, count you and then forget you, you know, <laughs> I mean, let's, let's do something if we, if we can. They, you know, it's the going mayor, to I mean, the uh, governor has established shelterless as one of his top priorities. So I think there may be some state emphasis that may flow down to the county, but homelessness in cities is really, um, I've had some friends tell me it's pretty startling. And so this is an opportunity to, to impact uh, local homelessness, I believe. And so one of the things that came up is that St. Christopher's had been awarded some money from one of the grants and um, Mac McDonald had been unable to reach anyone at the mission because right now there's this transition that's been going on. And so when I heard that, I connected him with um, the hospitality leader, Diane Ben and Reverend Jack Chase to mm -hmm. Um, because they have the have money that's mm -hmm. been given to St. Christopher's, but St. Christopher's hasn't used it probably because the communication as to what's there and how to do it yeah. didn't occur. Okay. So um, that's been connected. The other thing is that if there's someone who is without housing, there are a couple of hotel motels that have been have been contracted with to provide housing at the cost of the county. But again, it's getting, you know, I'm just going to say it's the, the bureaucratic stuff that goes with it. You know, you're unsheltered. You don't know where to go to get the help. You get to the place to get the help. The help can't come because nobody understands the regulations or the regulations are such that living in your car or living in a tent doesn't apply. I mean, it's really frustrating to be on this committee for that reason. Um, yeah, maybe he could take some of the money at the county level and, and have a fact sheet constructed to circulate through the county. That's a good idea. Of where these places are and how much 
and and you know what are the criteria for someone who's unsheltered something with information on it so we know on our bulls and boards around town and that sort of yeah. thing if you're here and you're unsheltered there's a that chance to get a warm night's sleep i'll take that back thank you yep all right if there's nothing else then linda update on the short-term rental and business licenses and then you have financial reports too the all of the short-term rental renewal letters have gone out and we are getting um uh, getting uh, um people's payments and so now i need to go into the next phase which i put it into the system and send them their license and <clears throat> i have all of the the business license letters out uh, this is the first year that we have charged for business license um, but we did the fee schedule a few months ago so i'm also starting to get them at, uh, those checks in so um it it's uh, been going pretty well uh, we're getting a lot of checks in i have a question uh, Linda, so, uh, will we be getting a list can you provide a list of uh, the short-term rentals and the business licenses in town? Um, could you say that again? I, I only got the first part of it. Okay, I, yeah, I'm a little ways from the microphone. <laughs> I'm just I'm hoping that we can have a list of the short-term rentals in town so that we can provide the list to everybody who's interested in buying a home and getting the business licenses. But, um, if, whether it just comes to us and goes into minutes or... Uh, whatever, just a second, we need to get a, uh, a count of who is doing business in the town. Um, I could give you that for sure, but the county has it. The easiest thing to do is probably um, either get with me or go to the county site. Um, it's got our businesses and short term rentals. Can you just send it out in, in an email or something once they're all? And, uh, yeah. I think it would be good just so that we all know who's, who's in business and maybe who's running a business that's not licensed or who's, who, if the neighbor is really running a short term rental or not. Um, those things I think this should be public. Um, so, some of our short term rentals are not active. Uh, what we did when we started that was we put a cap on how many short-term rentals there are the cap was based on basically anyone who wanted a short-term rental could apply for one and after the deadline which was the end of that year a couple years ago there are no more short-term rentals unless it's commercial so, but like i said some of those are inactive that means they are keeping their space open, but in the future, they may um, want to actually st um, start it as a business. So it's a little confusing. Yeah, that's okay. That, they, they can be all listed, whoever has a license. Thank you. Okay, if there aren't any other questions on that, we can move to the financial report, Linda. I sent out the financial report. I have added two things to it um, since yesterday. Um, our uh, office clerk is 140 and some change, and Rocky Mountain Power for the CCC, I think, was 355. So are there any questions and can I get a vote, a motion to accept these? Uh, was, was another one that you added since you sent it out to us, the, the weed one that, that it was a reimbursement, but there wasn't a value. The weed one is already on it. Well, it doesn't say an amount, at least on mine, unless you, unless it's one that you, you know, Um, let me see. I okay. Well, the weed one sh should be on. I only have the first page. Oh no, it says okay. Yeah, 
I see it. It's under Jim's name. Um, it's whatever that bill was. I was waiting for the um, the invoice, which I got, and I believe the bill was three hundred something. That's so whatever it was. I'm remembering too, but I just think before we approve them, we should have at least a ballpark of what what it is that we're approving. That, yeah, that was my only one I noticed. Um, I looked at them. I'll make a motion to approve these uh, bills to be paid. And, and just caveat that just let us know what that amount is next meeting. Um, and thanks for the thanks for the uh, hard work on the bookkeeping there, girl. Thank you. Uh, second. Any further discussion? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's unanimous. Are, is there anything under other? Then, at the advice of our our attorney, I have uh, I am withdrawing the re executive session for this week and setting it on for the first meeting in January. So then, I think we're ready to adjourn. Sure. Motion to adjourn. Second. Happy yes. holidays. Oh, hold, Brant, hold on. You're going out like you came in. It's 7.05. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Anyone opposed? All right. I, I agree with Brant. Happy holidays, everybody. Aye. Take a break. And I'm turning off the recorder. All right, back. Thank you. Good night. Happy holidays.